Hey everyone, welcome to Strange Stories, where we explore near-death experiences and supernatural stories from people who've had a glimpse of the other side. If you enjoy our content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Without further ado, let's get to the story of the day. My educational background is pastoral counseling and in the late 1990s, I wanted to add clinical hypnotherapy to my counseling skills. Therefore, I enrolled in an intensive program for psychologists and counselors. One of the requirements for this course was that each participant personally experience hypnosis on two separate occasions. My first session went extremely well, and I was able to completely relax. That evening, however, in my motel room, I began to feel some chest pain. It would appear and then vanish. I had been diagnosed with heart disease and had previously experienced similar pain, so I didn't pay much attention to it. I was still in pain the next morning, but I went to the session anyway. While we were in the initial relaxation phase of my second session, the pain in the center of my chest became worse, and I felt like a ton of weight was resting on my chest. The agony was excruciating. I told the therapist in the room that I wanted to stop the session because I was having some chest pain. The pain quickly became unbearable, to the point where I felt I couldn't go another second without passing out. I was convinced I was going to die from a heart attack when I heard a loud sound like clapping hands, followed by a swoosh sound, and I was out of my body. The pain vanished instantly, and I found myself above and to the left of my physical body. All of this happened in a flash. A long, thin, swirling, dark, purple vortex appeared, similar to a tornado, with the small end attached to my forehead and the long end winding out as far as I could see. I don't recall ever being in that tunnel or vortex, but I soon found myself in complete peace and gentle silence, surrounded by a brilliant white and blue light. Every time I've tried to describe this scene, I've failed because I can't find the right words. No. That's not exactly how it was, I think to myself, after each explanation. But I can't think of any words to do a better job. The light was completely saturated with love and acceptance. I felt compelled to abandon my own thoughts and ego in order to merge with the light. More than anything else in the world, I desire to be one with the light. I wished I could stay in that place of warm love, acceptance, and kindness forever. I had gone through a difficult divorce several years before this experience. I had done everything I could to save my marriage, but I had failed. I spent many nights sobbing and praying to God to show me how to make my marriage work. My main concern was that I had two daughters, 14 and 5, and that I would be destroying their security by breaking up their home. I care about them more than anything else on the planet, and I wanted to keep their world safe and intact. When my wife told me that I had to leave or she would leave with the kids, I decided that it would be best for my kids if I left so they could stay in their home and their lives would not be completely uprooted. My oldest daughter was old enough to understand the situation, but she took on a lot of guilt and blame for something she had nothing to do with. In every way, she was a wonderful daughter. My youngest daughter, on the other hand, clearly had no idea what was going on in her life. I adored her even though she was only five years old. She was my cherished child. I was her daddy, her protector, her provider. She entered the room just as I was packing my suitcase to leave. She was a proud little angel who never cried in front of others. But daddy, I don't want us to stop being a family. She choked back tears as she gently tugged at my shirt sleeve and spoke just above a whisper in a tiny quivering voice. But daddy, I don't want us to stop being a family. There are no words to describe how much sadness filled my heart at the time. I swept both of my daughters into a single embrace and sobbed as I apologized to them. That grief and sorrow would stay with me for many, many painful years. Now, let me return to my personal experience. The light spoke to me as I stood in front of this loving light of complete love, though there were no audible sounds. It was clear and very distinct, but only through telepathy. Give me your grief, the voice said. 
The words were loving and tender, but they were also very clear. At this point, in order for you to understand my story, I must disclose that my father verbally and physically abused me as a child. The verbal abuse made me feel completely worthless and unlovable, while the physical abuse was excruciatingly painful. I wanted my dad to love me and be proud of me more than anything else in the world, but it was not to be. The worst part of the abuse, however, was the overwhelming sense of helplessness and powerlessness. And at that precise moment, the loving light said, Give me your grief. I saw myself as a six-year-old boy standing in front of a tall shelf. A container labeled grief was located on the top shelf. I started reaching for it and stretching as much as I could. It was pointless. I simply couldn't do it. I hung my head in defeat, sobbing to the light. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Tears streamed down my cheeks and I felt the same sense of helplessness that I had felt as an abused, helpless, unlovable child years before. The light spoke softly once more. It simply stated, I can. Then two long rays of light flowed out of the light and swept down, taking my grief, stroked my head and cheek, and completely embraced me. These two rays of wonderful loving light hugged me, caressed me, stroked me, and filled me with all the love and acceptance I craved as a little boy. It was the most intense emotional experience I'd ever had. Every time I think about it, I'm overcome with tears of wonder and joy. I never stopped breathing during this experience. Later tests would show that I had not suffered a heart attack. During my experience, the chest pain had vanished and I had never felt better in my life. I would eventually have three heart stents and a pacemaker implanted, but there was no pain that day. When the student therapist in the room saw my expression of complete peace and wonder, she did not call an ambulance or bring in additional help. She was very intuitive and sensed that I was having a spiritual experience. She was completely taken aback and later told me that I was lying on the floor with my face shining and tears streaming down my cheeks, gracefully reaching for the sky. There was a teddy bear on the floor, and I had picked it up at some point and was gently stroking it while crying softly. That must have been quite a sight. A big grown man weighing 220 pounds lying on the floor, adoring a small teddy bear. During this time with the teddy bear, the clinical psychologist who was in charge of the seminar entered the room and she too was taken aback by my appearance and actions. She was so moved by what she saw that she insisted on taking the teddy bear home with me, a memento that I still have today. This experience completely altered the course of my life. A few days later, I was driving down the interstate, thinking about this incredible event when I thought to myself, I wonder what it all means and what I'm supposed to do now. I had barely finished speaking when I heard the same telepathic voice I had heard from the light a few days before. Grow, it simply said. After a brief pause, the single word grow was repeated louder than before, followed by a third and final commanding grow that was so emphatic that I physically jerked in my seat. And so I did. I've changed so much since then. I try to accept others as they are rather than as I believe they should be. I'm not afraid of death in the least. I got rid of most of my clothes and now dress simply. I'm not interested in material things. I try to help others when I can. I'm still not sure what happened to me that day in 1999, but it was clearly a watershed moment in my life. I know few things with certainty these days, but one thing is certain. Death is not a life-threatening condition.